at Mount Zion. Amen. Just going to take a few moments and worship God with an old song of the church. It goes like this. Tis the old ship of Zion. Tis the old ship of Zion. The Ralph Lofton on the organ. Tis the old ship of Zion. Get on the Get on. Get on board, church. Come on. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Cause you've been so good to me. And you've been so good to me. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Because you set my soul free. And you set my soul free. You've been a doctor. at Calvary.
you. Precious blood that made the difference at Calvary. It was the blood, the precious blood. That cleanse my sins and my iniquity. And I thank God for the blood. Came streaming down for me. It was, it was the blood that made the difference at Calvary. I thank God, come on. I thank God. I thank God. For, for the blood that came streaming down for me. And help us sing it at home. Come on. I thank God. Yeah. For your sacrifice. God bless you, and thank you so much for tuning in to another Bible study here at Mount Zion Church in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Bishop Joseph Walker, and I want to thank you so much for just being 
online today. I know that worship was so powerful. And, you know, we're really excited to have you connected. We've got something very special that's going to happen on today, even today and next week. So I want you to stay tuned right where you are. But listen to what I want you to do. I want you to know right now, as we're preparing for the Word of God, this unique presentation we have for you today, I want you to make certain that you stay connected to our ministry. Follow me and follow my wife on social media. Let us know that uh, you really want to stay connected. We would love to know where you're watching from and follow our ministry at uh, Mount Zion Nashville. We definitely want to make sure we connect with you if you're a first timer. Thank you so much. I want to give you an opportunity right now to know that we love you. We are praying for you and your family and thanking God for your faith and how you're growing as disciples in Jesus Christ. Listen, I want to give you a chance right now. Every time we come together, we sow. We believe in giving. We do it liberally. We do it cheerfully. And we do it because we love God. That's it. And so I want you right now here are the ways in which you can text the give. I want you to do that right now. Prepare your hearts to do that. And uh, while you are watching this, make sure you put a seed into good ground. Because let me tell you, there is no substitute for seed time and harvest. And the harvest is always greater than the seed. So I pray that over your life today. And I thank God for what you're going to do. I give God the glory. Uh, for the blessing that rests upon your house. I'm excited today because we are in what we have coined the Bread of Life Kitchen. We are here, y'all. Give it up. Woo! All right, all right. Listen, I am so excited. I know many of you were blessed by Deeper Dive Bible Study. It was such a blessing, right? We heard from the Gen Zs and we heard about their experience in church and how they viewed the kingdom going forward. Now, it's important. As a pastor, I've learned the church has to grow balance. And so I've got around me what we call our 50 plus and senior saint members. We know these are the folks that got that good wisdom. And so Today, we're going to sit at the feet of wisdom. We're going to cook a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit, right? They're going to cook a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit, have some real good conversations, really about where the church is going, how COVID-19 has impacted them, what they see now in the kingdom and all of that. So I'm excited. So guys, I'm excited. Y'all ready to have a good conversation? Yes. Yes. Y'all ready to get some cooking going? Yes. Yes. All right, they're going to get some cooking going. We're going to talk. But listen, I want to just start out. You know, I think it's important as we begin to think about the church and think about our relationship with Jesus Christ, a lot has transpired. And as we sit at the foot of wisdom, it's important that we really begin to think about how has um, this idea of church evolved. And, and behind me are people who have a, their own stories and histories about uh, their hopes and dreams about church, about the kingdom. And I think it's important. One of the things that we discovered, you know, during the pandemic was this idea of pivoting. And uh, it, it's interesting now because this is a generation that had to pivot as well, a generation that uh, had to learn about Facebook and learn about all this new technology and things that, that are happening now. But I really believe it's important uh, for us to understand that every generation has a voice, every generation has a seat, uh, every generation is significant as we continue to move ministry forward. So I'm praying uh, that all the young people are sitting around the TV now saying, talk to us, help us, help us be better. Because I've learned as a pastor, I've gotten so much better as a leader uh, because I grew up in Mount Zion, literally my, my, my 20s, 30s. I mean, I was growing up in this ministry and so many of these folks were pouring into my life and I still sit at the feet of wisdom. So let's get right into this today and and, you know, the Bible says uh, in Jeremiah, uh, uh, it says that I will give you pastors uh, after my own heart, right? We shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, right? It's so important. Jeremiah 3 speaks of this. I will give you pastors after my own heart. I, as a pastor, what I've tried to do is I've tried to teach the word of God practically to reach more than just one generation, five generations. And so the method has changed. And many of you have been privy to that. You have seen when I first got to Mount Zion, how the word of God was preached and the style and how it was delivered. And of course, you've been there and been able to sit and see how the message has shifted, not the message itself, but the method by which that message has come. How have you been able to adapt to that? You know, because obviously when I first got to Mount Zion, Michael, you know, you know, it was traditionally mostly, uh, you know, as well, you know, you know, as well, it was, it was a lot of, um, it was your parents, it was your, you know, it was a different church. You guys were, you know, in the youth ministry. <laughs> no, just kidding. But you were young adults back then, right? right. And now and then here you are, 
you know, in a generation watching your children, you know, in some cases, grandchildren come along and you've seen different ways in which the message has been proclaimed. How have you been able to adapt to that? Talk to me about that. How has that helped you? The way it has helped me, Bishop, is um, the message is the same. Right. The relevance is different. Okay. Um, you know, coming up in the church, yeah. we were used to a preacher preaching yeah. to us, yeah. not necessarily teaching us. Wow. Um, and what I have loved is your focus on being relatable. Mm being relevant and we can walk away from a service and someone can ask, so what did the preacher preach about? You're able to, to, to really say it. Because that was a time we just said, we had church. Right. What did the preacher talk about? I don't know, but we had church, right? Yeah, right. Because that, that was one of those things, right? Y'all remember that, right? It was amazing. And, and so I think, I think one of the things that was interesting about that, right, because you could, it was a lot of... Uh, emotion, a lot of, you know, celebratory mm -hmm. things. People were just, you know, church was a place that a lot of cathartic things were happening. People were coming in with a lot of pain, a lot, and it was just a place to shout. And then people began to think more about their faith and begin, when your children got a little older, they begin to ask questions. You heard that generation, you know, Z talk about, we're asking questions mm -hmm. now, right? And so a part of the method of preaching the gospel and sharing the word of God, I would give you pastors after my heart, which shall teach you, teach, 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 you know, a lot of people don't realize that Mount Zion Church really began to grow through Bible study. Right. Right. Michael, right. talk about that. Right. Talk about that, y'all. Like, yeah. It was more of you have to, along with that, you have to meet the person where they are. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Meet yeah. The, especially with children, meet them where they are. Bring them along. Uh, during Bible study, we were able to uh, focus more on teaching. Yeah. The teaching of the Bible. Uh, more so than, again, as Dr. said, being uh, preached to us. Everybody had an opportunity to, to get involved in different things. You know, there's been a change in worship styles. Everybody has their own flavor. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it that you feel worship means to you, your generation? Because, you know, young people, they had their chance. They take all the pews out. They talked about Y'all said that. We take the pews out, put pillows in it. I'm like, what, you crazy? <laughs> They're going to do that. But I mean, but in terms of like, really, like what worship, what does it mean to you that experience and some of the things that you feel the church should never let go of? Early on, church was like the family business. Mm. That's what we did. Yeah. And then a fellow came, brother, brother Reverend Walker came along, and then we started to really enjoy our church. I mean, we, we had yeah. to, we had to, uh, we had to bring our own enthusiasm. Yeah. Because you know we know what the sermon was going to be like. Yeah. So, yeah. So we played Moses. I remember back in the day we played Moses. We played Josh. We had yeah. plays in church. Yeah. And then a fella named Ram Walker came along, and then we, because <laughs> we had to do things to, yeah. to, because the sermon wasn't the big picture. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It's just like going to Tennessee State football game. Yeah. You know, you really came to see the band. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, so, but, but, but basically what I'm saying, yeah, you, you brought my Zion to another level. I mean, yeah, I mean, what God do you care? Right. I wasn't interested in hearing no sermon. Wow. How quick can we get out here and get over mirrors and get us a barbecue sandwich? <laughs> Man, look at it. So anyway, uh, but anyway, but then, you know, you, you made the word interesting. Well, you yeah. know, that's, and that, that touches me because, mm -hmm. because that's so important, right? Because, you know, you represent, you know, a generation that uh, you saw the shift. Mm -hmm. Like your understanding of church and what it meant back to that Jeremiah, you know. And this is important, right? Because people really want to really grow in the word of God, but, yes. but often... People will kind of take what they get because they have a loyalty to the church. Like your generation doesn't bounce around a lot. No. Right? No. Y'all right? no, no. no. stay. Y'all no. stay through the good, the bad. Yeah. Till we're gone. Uh, yeah, till you're gone. <laughs> till we're gone. You know, it's not many people. Like, you know, not many, a lot of generations now, they like, I, you know, I know people that's like yeah. not even 30. And they've been on, on their fifth pastor, their sixth church. You know, they ain't even 30 years old. Here you are, you think about, um, you know, what it means to be grounded, what it means to, to grow and, and that word and that worship and how that ties into everything that you are. Talk, talk, talk to us. It, it goes back, well, I'm from the baby boomers. And we would go to church. We were used to staying at church all day from Sunday school through BYPU. And uh, we, we were just there. But then... 
God placed in us teachable spirits. So when the real word of God came forth, we were able to receive it. It had been planted, so we are now able to receive it. The worship styles, I love the changes because there are different styles and everybody is not going to worship the same way in heaven. Yeah, yeah. And so I love the worship styles, uh, but now it's no more of the screaming we used to hear. Wow. And now we actually hear the word and uh, apply it with a teachable spirit, and then we walk it out. You know, one of the things that I think um, COVID-19 did, it helped us all to really look at our faith and look at our relationship with Jesus Christ completely different. It helped us realize what was essential, what mattered. It was about growing. It wasn't about recreational religion. It wasn't about coming together and just shouting and screaming and woo, hollering and all that. And mm -hmm. I think even pastors had to pivot, right. right? Because when you can't look in the camera and say, touch five people and turn around, you know, you gotta, you gotta teach, you know, you, really, you don't have all the stuff around. So it forced oh. leaders to really have to think about the importance of substantive teaching. Steady. And I think that is really, you know, something that I've tried to do. And I'm hearing you guys say that it benefited you, how it helped you you know, really look at church differently and really understand how you've grown through that. You, and you think about uh, how COVID-19 has impacted us, right? And the Bible talks about the Hebrews, right? It says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. There's nothing else your generation has strongly. You talk, it's fellowship, That's right. right? That was important. Family, fellowship, being three and four generations deep, mm -hmm. coming to the building. Let's talk honestly, Let's really help this generation understand, help those who are watching understand, how did this pandemic impact you? The moment I said, we're going completely virtual, and now we won't be in the building, and you had to turn Mount Zion into your living room, into your office space. I mean, talk about all that, all the emotion, whatever it did, or even what your level of spiritual maturity was, to able to pivot, or was it a struggle, or what have you. Talk about that. Oftentimes, yeah. you would come going to church because it was happening. Habit, okay. okay. Habit, and you had to change from that and make it your own personal, yeah. Okay, development yeah. and growth, right, within God. Um, I think that was the biggest thing. You're not doing something because somebody's accustomed to seeing you doing it, right? Okay, you having to again make it your own, sure, and move forward. Hmm. Okay, and, and during that time, uh, our daughter join church. Yeah. And it was somewhat a surprise to us, huh. but it still helped her develop more into who she is. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and you're talking, I mean, you're literally talking like three, if not four, three generations for certain in Mount Zion Church, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. yeah your, your mom and My dad are the oldest, yeah, yeah living, mm -hmm. you know, uh, members of our church mm -hmm. and, you know, you and your wife and then your daughter. I mean, that's, that's powerful to see all three generations coming to service, right, in that right. place. Go ahead on. I wanted to say what it did for me at first was depress me. Okay. I wanted to be in the building. Yeah. But God showed me that the church is in me. And it changed from knowing about God to developing a full relationship with God mm -hmm. and surely knowing who he was and what he will do. That's so powerful. You know, I think, um, and you talked about this earlier, right? The relationship and growing and, uh, you know, your daughter, you know, I've seen grow up, man, and it's, it's, it's powerful. Um, and you think about how had, how has the pandemic impacted you in terms of your faith, your family, all that? For me, it's a little different. Yeah. My mom died as a result of COVID-19. Wow. wow. And so yeah. uh, I wasn't attending churches regularly, right. but I was always tuned in. Tuned in, yeah. Um, my relationship with God has grown tremendously yeah. under your leadership. Yeah. I give God the glory for that. Yeah. Um, I pulled my children in, my grandchildren in when they're visiting, and we just sit there and watch have a conversation about the yeah. sermon. Yeah. And um, I myself dealt with COVID-19 um, 
So I haven't been back to church, even as a nurse. Yeah. I'm just really cautious. Yeah, I understand. Really cautious. Well, Rightfully so. Crowds and yeah. things of that nature. You know, one of the things we try to do in our ministry is really, you know, and to Dr. Steph's credit, you know, in our health and wellness ministry, really just taking the lead, helping other churches understand this, you know, the importance of being cautious, right? We were mm-hmm. very, very careful in terms of our protocols and putting those things, because we were thinking about you guys, mm-hmm. right? We were thinking about, like, you know, yeah, some of us, you know, may not, you know, have premorbidities, et cetera, but we go home to people. Your children come home to, to mama and sit at the table. We you know we sit around and talk and, and people end up getting COVID. I lost my pastor, you know, Dr. Harry Blake mm-hmm. in COVID. We, lost, we got a lot of loss in that and that has yeah. impacted us all. And for me, it was a big thing about making certain we, you know, try to sustain as many folks as we can and see you guys standing here today, you know, as a blessing to our ministry to see what God is able to do that. Yeah, that's, 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 whew. You know, the Bible says in Romans, it says, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of Christ. You've seen a lot. Let nothing, mm-hmm. death, and the life, powers, principality, nothing will separate me. Here you are still standing through all you've experienced in life, loss, joys, happiness. What has kept you? What has made you stay faithful? and all that, in your relationship with God, like, what do you say? Because there's a generation of people that, you know, you know it. They they go through difficult times, and they just give up. They're just out. And there's something about the resilience you guys have. It's something that needs to be transferred to another generation to help them understand, like, how do you endure it? How do you have that resilience and keep trusting God? That means you don't have some some spots where you fall off. You're human, but you're still standing. You're standing behind me. Today, after all these years, you're still faithful. What is it? What is that stuff? What's the ingredients, y'all? What's, it, what, what is it? Two cups of grace. <laughs> <laughs> Two cups of grace. Y'all heard Five that, right? Five cups of mercy. Five cups of mercy. Preach, man. And ten cups of love. Hey! <laughs> I love y'all, What? Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Woo! I like that, man. That's so true, though, right? Oh, it's, it's definitely true. You you're, you're, pointing, I mean. you're pointing to the, to the attributes of God. You know, when you went virtual, it's, it's kind of like a surprise test. Yeah. Here you are sitting that first Sunday. One I wasn't going to skip. Mm-hmm. I would have been at church. I would have been at church this Sunday, but you went virtual. Mm-hmm. So now you're sitting around the house with your sister. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> we got to do our own sermon. Mm-hmm. You can just imagine how that turned out. But, <laughs> but, but, you, but, you know, growing up in the church, growing up in the church, you learn the basics. Yeah. And then you came along and we started doing the basics. Yeah. No one is doing, what is it, faith without That's mercy true. dead. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so it's just been a blessing to have you yeah. coming right. That's Jefferson Street. Yeah. It's just historical. And, you know, the pandemics, the, the, the all the chaos in the world today, yeah. it's all in the book. Yeah, From Genesis is. Revelation. Mm-hmm. I live it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I've been to the desert, been in yeah. the lion's den. Yeah. I, I'm not confused about yeah. The love of God. Yeah. You know, yeah. Probably yeah. shouldn't still be standing here, but yeah. I am. But you are. But I am. Two cups yeah. of grace. Yeah. Five cups of mercy. <laughs> Two cups of love. I heard that. Did y'all hear that? You know, Woo. <laughs> Jesus, let me tell y'all something. Uh, y'all, this is so powerful. I, and you know, I think what you're hearing is, you know, like there are many of us who, who who hear these stories, we don't really understand, like, this is really about a person's faith and how that faith moves to resilience. It it really helps us endure you know, different seasons. You know, we don't necessarily get to choose the seasons in which God allows us to go through, but we can choose how we respond to them. And a part of what Paul says there in Romans, you know, I'll let nothing separate me. In that same context, I think it's so powerful. When you read Romans 8, it's just, it blows me away, right? Because this this is the whole context. And Paul, he opens up Romans 8 like this. He says, now, you know, there is, you know, he kind of talks about, listen, be clear, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. Mm-hmm. So we're not condemned by what we've done. And then he moves to this idea about really understanding, you know, your identity and purpose, right? You think to whom God, you know, called, he foreknew, and then he, you know, he glorified those to whom he called. It's a powerful thing about being in purpose, being in place, being in alignment, right? Being Knowing your purpose and being in that place. And then he says, you know, um, <laughs> and then we know, that all, all things, things work together. together. Right. So that all these different ingredients by themselves, man, nobody wants a stick of butter. No. no. Nobody <laughs> wants to eat a boiled egg or some flour, but we get through with this. 
We about to make up. We about to hook up a serious situation here. That's yeah, right. Because it's all got to work together. It's yeah, that's right. You see, yeah. the, all these experiences. And then he goes on saying, then, then who shall separate us? If God be for us, who who be against us? Man, through so all these years, right? And this idea of our faith and how our faith is interwoven through our experiences, incredibly powerful. It speaks to our history. It speaks to where we are. It speaks to the wisdom God has left on record for us to draw from. And this is why this Bible study is so important. I hope you're taking good notes while you're watching because I want you to understand something. These folks behind me are just like you. The difference is they got a relationship that's not, they're not just talking about it. They're living this stuff hey, out. Man. You live this thing out in wisdom. You know, God, God has done some amazing things um, in Mount Zion Church. Um, uh, I remember when we, because uh, this is nothing new. Like, we've had to pivot before. Yeah. People think, you know, Mount Zion is like pivoting in the pandemic. Oh, we pi No, we, we pivoted from Jefferson Street to the World Baptist Center. Y'all remember those days? That's yeah. right. That's right. And you know, when people were standing around the building and y'all remember all that, right? That's right? Couldn't even get, you know, we just married barbecue, sending us notes saying you're blocking our traffic. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was wow. crazy. It was fire marshal coming in. It was crazy. Deacon sending the window seals. Yeah. And man, it ain't nothing new, right? right. But we That's have right. seen the faithfulness of God because of the consistency. That's right. The can resilience. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's about what we've been able to accomplish through him. And it's because of the faithfulness and the, and the consistency of you guys. It's because of what you bring and the wisdom. My, my question is, if you had, for example, if you had, you know, one thing you'd want to say to somebody watching right now, give each one of you a chance to think about it, okay? Think about this. One thing you want to say to somebody right now who's going through this pandemic and they kind of are struggling with depression or struggling with giving up and like, you know, I just don't know. And they kind of detaching from church. And you've just talked about like how this has been your lifeline, mm -hmm. not so much the church building, but the relationship right. and your relationship being taught the word of God. Cause it's so easy to slip away. It's so easy. You know, I talked about this, you know, early on, you know, I did a series. Y'all remember this, right? Last month I did a series, you know, on back to God. And we talked about the, the distance, you know, people get that distance between them. And guys, it's so important that we understand, man, how to get back to God. And I think it's important to understand the wisdom to hear what this generation is saying to you, like hearing from them to say, look, this is what I've learned, and trust me, trust me. <laughs> the book of Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun, man. There's nothing new under the sun. What, what, what would you say to that person that's drifting, that's letting this pandemic or the world get the best of them, and then not realizing the importance of their relationship with God? What would you say to really draw that person back in? I'll start with you. Okay, uh... I am a non-judgmental person, uh, but I can tell when people are losing their grip yeah. with Christ. The thing that I would say to everybody is make sure you keep your spirit over your mind. Your spirit over your mind. How can you do that? Study the Word of God. Get you two, you're not going to find more than three real friends that really love you and pushing you and you pushing them. And when, and check on each other. Check to make sure each other are doing fine. When you see one slip, we're like a tree that's planted by the river. Mm. And if I see you slip, I'm going to lean over and get you and help you. This is the way we were taught in our generation. Mm. Mm. Wow. I s go into thinking about things that have previously happened, okay? Mm. And remember that God has brought me through those things. It wasn't me wasn't my parents, it was God. Mm -hmm. Which leads me also to think of different scriptures. Trust the Lord with all oh, that heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not to your own understanding. And he's going to direct you through it. Again, trust him. Let him lead the way and you'll be okay. Mm. <clears throat> Amen. I would say begin your day with prayer. 
read in the word. Build yourself up in the world word. That is what has sustained me. Um, my relationship with Christ uh, just goes stronger, gets stronger and stronger but as the day goes by because I'm intentional about reading the word, beginning my day with prayer before anyone in my house gets up. I'm mm. on my knees before the Lord. Mm. I love it. I love it. You got to seek the Lord. Mm. Seek wow. his righteousness and all things will come up to you. Mm. You know, it, I know a lot of people probably weren't raised in the church like we were. Yeah, and and I got a friend that never knew the Lord. They know him now. And it's, it's no humanly, earthly way to put it because the Holy Spirit comes from trusting in God. However you need to, just get down on your knees and just pray. If that's a good way to start. If you don't know what to pray about here, put the words in your mouth. Yeah. Just, 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 just seek first the kingdom of God and his riches and all these things will come unto you. I love it. I love it. Wow. Wow, y'all. I hope y'all heard that. Listen, here's what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to start making this cake. I'm going to talk to the people. Y'all ready? We ready. Let's make we all ready. things work together. Turn it on, on, Doc. Come on, do it. Come on. Turn, turn Listen, it on, Doc. Go ahead. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. While they're making this cake, I want y'all to hear me. I want you to understand what we have heard today is so incredibly important. Y'all go ahead and make that cake. Come on, get I'll that oven on. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> Come on, Eric, get that bowl, that spoon out. You don't know nothing about no blunder. Come I on. love it. But listen, I want y'all to listen. This is so important. They're going to start making this cake. And uh, But listen, and this is so important, right? Because what they're doing... What are they doing? Do 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 you see oh, yeah. you how they talk? Get that bread out of There's no, no way to script it. Come on, let's go at Listen, guys, this is so important. I love it. But this is what family is about, right? It's about understanding that each one of us has certain gifts. Every generation brings a certain revelation, certain wisdom, and we have to share all of what we have with each other that we might be better. What we learned today, I think it's so important, right, because I talked about the importance of the Word of God, the relevancy of the Word of God, how the Word of God really is a sustaining variable. Our faith comes by hearing. Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. Listen to me. And hearing by the word of God. As we continue to hear the word of God and hear it over and over, that word is what keeps us grounded. And I don't want to have the kind of people that I pastor that understand what stick to it this mean. To be enduring, to be resilient, to be able to handle whatever season comes because you are rooted and grounded in the word of God, man. The Bible says in the book of Job, Though a tree be cut down, I love this. I love this in Job 14. Though a tree be cut down, it shall sprout again because the roots are old in the earth. It's the root system. It's Mount Zion's root system. People look at what God is doing in our ministry. It's the root system. It's these folks. It is what they have that we need. It's that kind of faith. And I know sometimes we look at, you know, the failures of people in the generation or whatever, but nobody's perfect, but they're here. And God has left them here for us to learn from. And even as we work together, we have to understand not only that, we have to understand that we all have a purpose. We have something that God wants us to be doing out here, man. God wants us to be moving and working together to make his kingdom advanced in the world. This is our moment. This is our time. And we've got to understand that God wants you to be a part of something amazing. When everybody else is leaving and being disillusioned by the pandemic, this generation has seen a lot. They've come through a lot of different things. Yes, the pandemic is tough, but they've come through a lot of different seasons, a lot of different traumatic experiences, but they've been able to say, nothing will separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So I want to just let you know, I know perhaps physically you've been impacted by the pandemic and my prayers are with you, maybe even spiritually. You've had questions. One of the things I have learned is that God can handle your inquiries and God can also handle your injuries. Whatever it is you're dealing with, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. But then I want you to understand emotionally that the way we get through this emotionally is through the support of each other. It's understanding. We overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. By the fact that others have gone through it and give us a powerful testimony is what allows us to come through and also have a testimony. If God could do it in one generation, he can do it through the next. 
Hear the words of David. I leave it with you. I want you to really pay attention to this one. David says, I was young. Now I'm old. Yeah. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging bread. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what this is about. It's about being righteous before God, being in right standing with God in my family, my faith, in every single area of my life, and knowing that God will always take care of me as long as I remain in that right place. Okay. My prayer for you is that you receive the revelation that God has given to us today, that you really meditate on those words in Romans about letting nothing separate you. Read that book of Romans and meditate on Jeremiah 3.15. And then you understand why I teach the way I teach. I'm not preaching to entertain you. I'm not up here trying to get you to follow with a pew. I'm here trying to empower you, to give you a diet, a healthy diet. That's why you need a pastor. You need a covering that can lead you and direct you on a path toward destiny. That's my obligation, not to preach you happy every Sunday, but to challenge you, to convict you that ultimately you might be changed. That's the power of the Word of God. Some things Jesus said the disciples were happy to hear. Some things he said they were not happy to hear. The whole point is, Paul tells Timothy, you've got to preach the Word in season and out of season. That's what my responsibility is. And I pray as you continue to sit under the Word of God, be a part of these kinds of Bible studies and grow on Sunday as well, that you see your faith enhanced, see your life growing, your family growing, Y'all, we're growing together. We are better together. Just like this cake is about to be better together. So I want to thank y'all. I want to thank, we are in the Bread of Life Kitchen. Give it up, y'all. All right, Woo! all right. <laughs> I want to thank y'all so much for being a part today. And guess what? Next week, we're going a little deeper. We got a whole nother conversation with a whole nother group of folks from this generation that's going to bless you. And maybe by the end, we have this cake ready. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to see how it comes out. I pray you be blessed. Don't forget, make sure if you need a relationship with Jesus Christ right now, what you can do is all you've got to do is text the word salvation to the number right here on the screen. I want you to make a decision. Maybe you've been convicted today and you said, you know what? I need a relationship with Jesus Christ. So maybe I need to get my life back on track. I heard the wisdom from that generation. And man, my generation's got to step up. I need the faith. I need that resilience in my life. It doesn't come from what you drink, what you smoke, or who you date. It comes from a relationship and of aligning with Jesus Christ. And maybe you, you need a church home where you can grow. Mount Zion is a wonderful place, incredible diversity. We're diverse, not only in terms of cultures, but we're diverse in terms of generations. That's what I love about it. Whether you're in, in Generation Z, or you're a baby boomer, or an X, it doesn't matter. We're all here, and we work together. We work together. That's who we are. We welcome you to be a part of that. So salvation, right there at the number, Texas. Thank God for you. And don't forget the soul. I thank all of you for giving as you do every single week. Also, there are the uh, chances to give again right here. Hit text right there. There you go. There you go. Give as well. Thank you so much for being a part. I love you all so much, and I cannot wait to see you next week right here from Bread of Life Kitchen. Now, let's see what we can do with this cake. I'll see you all next week. Pray. <laughs> 